Oh, man. So it's funny. So I was wearing a suit uh, this morning, you know, because of the the situation. And yeah. my kids, they never see anybody wearing a suit except for our pastor. Uh-huh. And so my, my youngest son, Noah, goes, Daddy, are you wearing a Pastor Jerry costume? Ah. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> it's so rad dude oh my goodness oh yeah man oh my kid's just starting to get to the age where he's saying things that other people can understand besides just uh, our, us the parents and it's sure, really yeah. scaring me i'm really scared to go out in public because i know he's just going to start saying things that are obvious and yeah. inappropriate at the same time <laughs> yeah i remember when i was with you guys i couldn't understand anything he was saying but it was, yeah. it was very clear he was saying very important things <laughs> You know, because he he was talking with emphasis, but... (laughs) Right. (laughs) Just like me. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly right, yeah. Yeah, I love that when when they're young and and they're just starting to learn how to talk. You can tell they've got a very important story, but, like, you can barely understand anything. Right, (laughs) yeah. And, like, as a parent, you understand he's really talking about his boogers or something, but you play it off like it really (laughs) is important. (laughs) You play it off like it's it's profound, you know? (laughs) Yeah, exactly right. Uh, Welcome to Reformed Jellical, where the Reformed and Evangelicals meet. My name is Matt Williams, co-hosted by the great A.D. Robles. A.D., how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great. Great, great. Thank you for everyone who's joined early watching us live. You can watch us live 7.30 p.m. Eastern time on YouTube and Periscope slash Twitter forever long that last. For those of you listening, can you hear me okay? Last time, some of you said you couldn't hear me, but you said it at the end of the show before I could do anything about it. So I turned it up a little bit and I noticed that it was true on the recording. Um, But luckily, our platform actually came out with a new beta feature of recording audio separately. So we're going to try that out and see uh, if that is the case again. It'll be easier for me to fix. For those of you who are listening on the podcast, wherever you listen to that. Uh, So I am part of a project. I hope this is okay. I want to show a two-minute video. It's more like an advertisement of the Institute of Public Theology. It's something I've been working on. Okay, I've been working on this project for probably a year and a half maybe now and we're just starting to launch it there's this really great promotional video and i'm telling you to have a seminary or school or whatever you want to call it teaching pastors on how to apply theology to the public sphere and public life yeah um there's been a need for this for a very long time that's right Uh, and so i'm really excited about this if you are interested in going into ministry or know someone that is you should share this clip that I'm going to share, um, sh- share the links and go check it out. It's part of it's- Stop, Matt. You have to stop. Okay. My wife sent me a very important text message. We, you have to tweet on the Reform Jellicle account because there's 666 tweets. <laughs> <laughs> Is sorry that really? Inter- sorry to interrupt your flow, but I thought, especially coming from oh. a Calvary Chapel background, you you would want to know that. I know. I I feel like I, we have the vaccine card by now. The mark of the beast. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your very poor announcement. I, I actually do really want to watch this. So let's yes, go ahead. And wait, do wait, that. hold on. Slay the beast. That's right. That's my tweet. that's my tweet now. Bam. <laughs> Slay the go. beast. <laughs> very important. All right. So yeah, I'm gonna pop this up on the screen. It's <laughs> on Gab. If you want to share it or whatnot, uh, it's just a really great done video by the great Chocolate Knox. So here I we go. Knew it. Wow. Good stuff, right? He looks like such a scholar there. I know. I forget he's our age. Yeah.
Wow. A shameless founders logos on there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really really awesome, man. That that pumps you up. Yeah, where, I wonder where I, I can get some of that wisdom that Vodi has on his uh, I know. beard, you know? Is that like an African little, product that he gets I, while he's in um wherever I mean, he lives? That's that's good, man. I like that. I, I know, dude. Ready. His beard is so strong. It's like it's almost intimidating. He doesn't even need to say anything. He just has that beard. Uh, <laughs> Zambia, that's where he is. That's where he You know, is. It, it just occurred to me watching that video that um I don't know about Tom Nettles, but but um man, two two of those men went through some you know, sort of life threatening situations fairly recently. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's, we're just, it's just such a blessing that they're both still with us. You I know, know what I mean? After what happened with, uh, with, with Vody and, um, and, uh, Tom. So, you know, what? yeah, man, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's so, that's awesome, man. And then you got, then you got Jared there. He's the young guy. And, uh, um, right. But just so solid, man. It's just, it's exciting. It's exciting. I, know. I can't believe I can't believe I had to wait till Baptist to do this kind of stuff, you know? <laughs> I know. That's what's so exciting is this is usually a Presbyterian uh, yeah. niche that's going on, but uh, the that's Baptists right. are stepping up. And it's funny, every, Jared and how he talks, I always just assume he's so much older, but he's like, I yeah. think he might even be like a year younger than me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, exactly. I know what you mean. I know exactly yeah. what you mean. Yeah, but you know what's cool about, I don't know if I'm supposed to share this or not, but I mean, it's not that big of a deal or whatever, but from what happened with Vody. And it, his our heart issues. There's some things lining up where they're going to be able to bring like the state of the art heart treatment professionals that he had to have for this in the states to Africa. And mm. so God's kind of been lining some things up through this, you know, hurdle or whatever you want to call it trial and whatever, actually yeah. using it to bring this medical technology back to Africa where they no, don't have it. Wow. And so it just, wh how crazy is that from your one trial, God has used it to bring this life saving technology to Africa. So just a, one of the blessings that have come from that. You just never amazing. know what God's going to do with that stuff. You know, it's amazing stuff, man. I love it. That, that, mm -hmm. that's exciting. I don't know if you're allowed to say this, but is, is this, do you know when this is going to start? Like all this stuff? Uh, yeah, we are launching fall is going to be our first uh, cohort. We're going to do a cohort. I don't know how many people we're exactly going to um, be admitting at first. So if you are interested, get over there. Yeah, I know you can go to founders.org and sign up and just be getting the emails and the newsletters. And uh, we'll be sending out applications and all that stuff shortly for are you, you to apply. To our audience, or are you talking to me directly? <laughs> yeah, I'm talking to myself, man. I'm going to be signed up. If you want to join me and take classes at IPT, hey, come on over. Um, yeah, it'd Good be really stuff, great. Man. But you know, there is something that really struck me from that video, and it kind of correlates with the, one of the polls that I was put in our show notes. But uh, Vodi was talking about how we need to have theology being the underlying um, understanding or the biblical theology being underlying uh, understanding of all the, the spheres of authority, the government, family, and the church. But so often we have kind of conceded that right of teaching the spheres on how to act, how to behave, what to say, where to say it to the government and to our culture. Uh, where, you know, the government and our culture says you just shouldn't talk about politics, you shouldn't talk about religion in, in your uh, in government, in your workplace, or in, in out in public or whatever. And we've kind of been living in this place where the government has been discipling us how to act within these spheres. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. like what these guys were saying in the video, that's not their role. Now, the church is separate spheres from the, the family sphere and the government sphere, and they have distinct responsibilities. 
but it's always been the church's role to educate those other spheres on what is their expectations from God to them to do. And I don't think we've been doing that. And that's been a big problem. We've given that over to the government to do, not just start taking over our responsibilities in the other spheres, but being allowing them to be the ones to teach us what is acceptable and not in those other spheres. And I just was listen, thinking about that after listening to that. And I just went off in like a dark hole for 20 minutes yeah. of like, that's a really big issue that I think we've had for a long time. Yeah, totally. No, I, I, I absolutely agree with you. It kind of reminds me of um, once, once. so if you remember, Doug Wilson was sort of on the side of, let's wait and see, but for now we'll listen to the government. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then he switched and, well, I don't know if he switched, but then he, then he said, okay, it's ridiculous now. And um, one of the things he said was certain things really do belong to Caesar, but one of the things that definitely doesn't is deciding what those things are. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. And so yeah. it's like it's like the government and 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 and, and you know we, we we call it Caesar when we're talking in biblical speak, but the government has you're right has taught the church and the people what the spheres are supposed to do and where where they're supposed to be, where they're not supposed to be. And that's not how it works at all. That's totally twisted and totally upside down. God mm -hmm. decides all those things. So God tells the government what to do. God tells the church what to do. God tells the individual, the family, and all that stuff. And if you don't like it, that's uh, that's tough. You think that's religion in government? Well, too bad. It probably is. That's But that's what God says. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I like absolutely that. right. Yeah, absolutely beautiful, right. Beautiful. I, w I was looking at this poll and I, w I was wondering what your thoughts were with it. Um, oh, it doesn't show it in the preview. It's a Rasmussen reports poll. I'm going to click on it because I can't read the, the, the percentage. Okay. A new Rasmussen reports national telephone and online survey finds that 72% of American adults believe Jesus Christ was the son of God who came to earth to die for our sins. Uh, only 17% don't believe that is true in America. What do you think about that? Wait, repeat that? Seventy two percent of American adults, according to this Rasmussen report poll, which Rasmussen's pretty accurate, believe Jesus Christ was the Son of God who came to earth to die for our sins. Seventy two percent of American adults. When mm. only seventeen percent say they don't believe that. Does that seem mm. completely off to you? Like it does me? It seems very off, um, and I just I wonder how they asked the question. Was it like a leading question, or that's that seems very off? Yeah, I don't understand that. Yeah, like Rasmussen, it, I wouldn't. I would think that they would do a proper poll. I mean, they're pretty legit right, right, polling right. polling spot. And the only thing that I can think of is the very thing that we were just talking about before is that. They have been discipled and conditioned by the world on how to act out that faith and what is acceptable, what is not. Right. You don't need to go to church. You can accept gay marriage. Sure. And you know, you shouldn't talk about this stuff in public public. It shouldn't influence your politics. You shouldn't mingle those two together. And while maybe there I I don't believe seventy two percent of Americans are saved and going to heaven. Sure. But if you believe that what is the disconnect where it's so far-fetched that number like if you had to ask right. me how many americans believed that i would think at best 25 percent maybe sure, optimistically sure. but there's such a disconnect from their lives and uh what they claim right here yeah i just you know i i, I i'm trying to think of of really what what i what, what to make of that but you know some people will believe like 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 here's the thing like you would Mormons would say yes to that, you know what I mean? A lot of people yeah, would say yeah, a lot of people would say yes to it. I remember I'll never forget. I was watching uh, a, a movie. It was like a, a long time ago. It was like this really weird, bizarre movie called Kids, and it was basically mm -hmm. about like a bunch of like young kids like partying and drinking and having sex and stuff like that. And and I remember one time that there, there's these really young kids, probably like eleven, twelve, and they were smoking weed in, in this movie, and. One of the guys goes, yeah, you know, what do you think of my chain? He's like, yeah, I like it. I like it. And he goes, what do you think of Jesus, man? You like him? He's like, oh, yeah, he's the savior. And, like, they're high as anything. Like, like they uh -huh. know it from their, like, their childhood. So they would say, yeah, I believe that. But, you know, like, really, what does it mean? Like, what is that supposed to mean? They died. He died for your sins. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, so I guess maybe like a bare bones, because probably R Rasmussen wasn't asking, like, deep theological questions. It was probably asking <laughs> basic right. stuff. So yeah. maybe maybe on a basic level, people kind of 
you know, know the, what to say because yeah. of what their religion says. But yeah, I don't know. That's an interesting one, man. Yeah, it's like a Santa Claus. Maybe, you know, like, do you guys sure. believe that Santa Claus is a kid? Yeah, 77% of Americans believe that as a kid. Right. right. And, uh, so I also wonder, because I was adults, wonder where kids are at. Because I remember listening to that documentary that painted the wall black. And there was this one who's, you know, about Jesus. And then the guy never heard of him before in right. that documentary. And I'm, th- I'm thinking, man, yeah, that's probably true because like our our generation raising kids now or even a little older than us probably didn't have that same church attendance and um i don't know what to say not indoctrination but um catechizing that our parents did to us and i just wonder what the gap is going to be with that Um, right and then the other thing i was thinking about with this number is if that's true that percentage is true then there's a lot of condemnation on us as Christians. Mm. Like if you believe this is true and the country is where it's at, our value systems are where they're at, our entertainment com- consumption is where it's at. Like it's just like you know the law, so you have more sure. of a accountability. Um, you have more judgment against you, and it's a pretty pretty sad thing. I'd love to hear anyone in the in the chat what you guys think about that too. Well, I'll tell you what. So you know, I don't I don't know how to find this quickly, but. I would wonder what percentage of Americans are baptized because, you know, if you're baptized, then, you know, you're, you're baptized into Christ. And I, I, to go along with what you've said, it's like you got baptized into Christ and now it's like upside down morality time. So clearly <laughs> right. there's a lot of, there's a lot of issues there. There's a lot of, you know, it's like getting, it's like getting, it's like Israel was circumcised, the, you know, on the eighth day, everyone was circumcised on the eighth day and they're also bowing down to Baal. Like God doesn't mm-hmm. look kindly on that. You, you, know, you know what I mean? Like you're taking right. the Lord's name in vain at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you believe that Christ died for your sins and then, you know, you're not, nothing changes in your life and you're, you're living in the upside down, you know, that, that, what, what value is, is that baptism to you? Like, like that's taking the right. Lord's name in vain. Yeah. And the truest sense of it and yeah. the truest sense of it. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. That's, I didn't see that one. That's interesting. Yeah. I think that is interesting. So I did go on Twitter earlier today and I regret it instantly. <laughs> well, I, I've done it a couple times and I always instantly regret <laughs> Instantly regretted it. Yeah, uh, because of the first tweet I saw, and the only, I don't have a Twitter account. I just go on the Reform Jellical to see if you know what our followers are to clear them out. Because I'm OCD and do not like the notification buttons <laughs> being there. Uh, and I, I made a mistake, and I might just delete <laughs> our Reform Jellical account so I don't have to experience this again. This was the first tweet I saw on, <laughs> on our Twitter. Oh, yeah, I saw this one. Russell Moore, double masked, vaccine card, in his car, alone. If you needed any more confirmation of if Russell Moore is a Democrat or not, just look at all the virtual signaling that's happening in one photo. (laughs) Dude, this is... I, I, this is this is a remarkable photo. It's not even that he's a Democrat. It's just that he's literally a sheep with the wrong shepherd. Like he's just following whatever the world does. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna take the same picture that every celebrity took. I'm gonna take the same picture that every you know <laughs> yeah. stupid uh, P, uh, PSA is. It's just so dumb. It's just like it's so he's dumb. just doing literally whatever everybody else does. Literally, yeah. And it, it's like it's not even like okay, you're wearing the two masks in public while you're getting your vaccine. You're in your freaking car alone, <laughs> taking a picture, a selfie. He's just doing. He's just following the masses. What is it? Not a sheep. That's not what I meant. I meant a lemming, like a, a lemming. lemming. Yeah. He's just yeah. doing the thing that, that he's just like, that's the, this is what all the kids are doing. So I guess I'm doing this too. By the mm. way, I checked his YouTube video the, or channel the other day, like still just a, a ghost town. Of it's a ghost town. Poor guy. He probably spent so much money on that and yeah. it just didn't work. <laughs> well, you know, YouTube's taking away the dislikes that they're that? taking away that. So YouTube is removing the number of dislikes a video gets. Oh. <laughs> for the only two people in the world, Joe Biden and Russell Moore. Those are the only ones who are going to benefit from that. <laughs> oh, Man, this but, picture is so oh, ridiculous. 
Dude, after I threw up a little bit in my mouth, I was looking at this and he's I, and I was thinking to myself, this is the perfect picture of what statist religion looks like. Right here. Yeah, it's true. That's a very That's good point. That's what it is. Yep. There we go. So, I am not going to be on Twitter for a very long time until I get that out of my head. Another um, picture, and I wanted to show this. Okay, I'm just sharing a lot today. So, if you are listening uh, on a podcast, you might want to check it out on Gab TV. I'll post it on my account, or you can go back on YouTube or on Twitter to watch it. I guess it's always there in live recording. I'm just going to share my entire screen and pop this up if I can. I can't. I can't do that. Okay, I'll do Telegram. This is amazing. So, I've not been following closely the. Um, trial with uh, Derek Chauvin and uh, George Floyd. But I've been hearing a lot of things. I was listening to a Jack Postobic tweet about jury selection, and there was a lot of critical race theory and um, CRT questions being asked by both sides, which is interesting because it really just reemphasizes how important it is to fight this stuff. It's making its way into criminal cases and sure. perverting justice. But this is a picture by a guy. He's like a. This is the guy I've talked about before. He's like the hacker slash independent journalist. Yeah, you mentioned this guy. Yeah, I've mentioned this guy before. Yeah, but he took these pictures from the f trial, which is down below for those of you who are looking, and he saturated them, overexposed them to be more clear. And look at George, or I mean, sorry, Derek Chauvin. Um, on top of George Floyd and a different angle showing his knee is on his back. Hmm. And I mean, if this is how it was consistently through the video and we were just seeing it from a wrong angle. Yeah. Like, just think about how much outrage and rioting and all of this stuff happened because we saw one angle of one footage of what appeared for him to be on his neck suffocating him. Yeah. And yeah. if this photo is an accurate, and I'm not saying it is per se, but I mean, at least sure. in this instance, you can see that knee is on his back. It's not on his neck at all. Right. No, you're, 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 you're right. So you don't know really what we're seeing here. I mean, like you said, it's, Correct. it's, it's just a snapshot. It could go on and look ter terrible like it, like it did when we first all saw it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but I think like the point though is that you you, you need to like cool it for a little bit before <laughs> before you d go and draw the conclusions before you go and say things that have a uh, lot lots of consequences like you need to wait and see you have to you just right. have to I I know that people say that that's white supremacy but it's actually required <laughs> um, it's actually a biblical godly requirement if you're going to be holy as Christ is holy. You actually do need to wait and see, and you actually mm -hmm. do need to establish the facts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And just imagine, and I don't actually know if this would have changed anything, but in a rational world, if that video would have been released with these photos, at sure. least there would have been more perspective to it. Sure. Um, and I'm just hearing a lot of stuff in the, the trial and just quotes and clips coming from it where I would be really surprised if this guy gets convicted at all. I mean, there was yeah. witnesses saying that he was saying he couldn't breathe while he was standing. It wasn't even engaged with the officers. He's saying he couldn't breathe. Sure, that, sure. Well, and that if there you've was... Ever, yeah, go if ahead. you've ever watched... Sorry, Matt, to interrupt no, no, you. No, no, please. But I don't know if you watch this kind of stuff, but you know, I've been known to watch trash TV from time to time. <laughs> if you've ever watched even one cop show, you mm -hmm. know that criminals, when they're being arrested, say all kinds of stuff. Oh, you're breaking my arm. Oh, oh, you know, I can't breathe. I, I, it's a claustrophobic. They say all kinds of stuff. So it's like, okay, he really couldn't breathe. I get it. But how many times have these officers heard the exact same thing from a clown? Who right, was just, exactly right. Who was just trying to, like, you know, get them to take it easy on him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that, and this is, whatever, this is what the psychos will say. Were you saying he deserved to die? <laughs> and it's like, okay, you know, like, you know, I, I understand that public school has melted your brain, but no, right. that's not the same thing as saying that, <laughs> you know, you mm. know what I mean? Like, that's not the same thing. But the point is, that's why uh, c criminal courts, that's why having multiple witnesses, that's why cross-examination are things that are literally required in the law of God, because 
God is smart and he knows that when in the moment when when passions are inflamed, it's very difficult to see what's what. And then when you remove yourself from it for a little bit, it's actually a little bit easier to see what's going on. Mm hmm. Yep. And Absolutely you know, right. now, now we're blessed by having, you know, so many videos, so much uh, technology that we can do this kind of stuff where we can, like you said, this, uh, what did he say? Overexposed. Is that what it is? Yeah. Um, overexposed it like this, 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 it's like night and day looking at these two shots. This one is mm -hmm. like very difficult to see what's going on. This one is very clear. Right. And so, you know, we don't know what's what when it first happens. And so what we definitely don't need are, idiots like the guy that we just saw on the screen saying oh yeah, white cops have been murdering blacks for centuries with his stupid <laughs> hobbit mask you know what i mean we definitely definitely don't need that but that's what we're gonna get because that's what makes you look good and uh, well at least that's what he thinks makes you look good really it just makes you look as stupid as this hobbit mask and this vaccine card right exactly right exactly right and yeah Sorry, I interrupt you man no, 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 you're totally great. And it's just, just thinking about like all these Russell Moore people on the you know, Christian side who should have wisdom and understand that you should wait and see what's happening and not just join the clams that are in the world of pagans that are just going to find any excuse to rage. And it's like, how many times did we go through and just say, hey, let's just wait and see? It looks bad. There's probably, you know, like if he choked him out, there's no excuse for that. Um, but we need to wait and see and find all the points. And sure enough, just just like a lot of other times, we're justified in just waiting to see what happened. Um, oh my gosh, I'm looking at the twi the Twitter right now before I close out because I'm never going back. It, like a lot never, of people are saying, again. it's a cesspool. Never again. <laughs> Two twenty four hundred people like this photo of the double mask, and he, this is Hobbit is vaccinated. He called himself a Hobbit. <laughs> So cringe. So cringe. Oh, it's better than Eddie Munster. If that's what he really looks like. <laughs> Eddie Munster. That, I heard that from someone. I don't, I don't know who I heard that from. Yeah. Someone in the comments here, I think. <laughs> yes. It really does look no, like We do that. have those good <laughs> Yeah, we do. Uh, Mary was saying that he had loads of drug system and consistent. I believe yeah. it's true. I heard the same thing. Um. Yeah. yeah. So well, I, I would be the, shocked. I, I heard the same thing and it's going to come out in court and, um, you know, it's going to be very difficult to actually prove that, um, that this guy killed him, but with a, with a, with a knee on the neck, you know what I mean? And, and then even if he did, um, it's going to be very difficult to prove the, the malice or whatever it is that they're going for. I, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. but the thing is like, but the, the, the thing that's actually really perverse about all of this is that, he might get convicted and you know and, and even yeah. if the evidence isn't great he might get convicted and and that's exactly why when you're a christian you don't join the crowd in doing evil by pronouncing him guilty before he's even had a trial that's actually evil to do and i in my book i one of the things that i i quoted it was so funny like I knew that the uh, the Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary uh, woke division, whatever they call it, I mm -hmm. knew that they had some bad writing about justice. And so I just wanted to Google to see if I could find the, the best one. Well, mm -hmm. I didn't have to search. It was the very first thing on the page, and it was oh, them gosh. calling Chauvin a murderer and stuff like that. And I said, that, that, wow. that's a perversion of justice. Christians can't do that because they know that once it's in the cultural con uh, psyche, it's very difficult to get that out. And so it's very hard for Chauvin to get a fair trial here. Very far, very hard. Now, yeah. I think it's a very good chance that the evidence is going to probably end up exonerating him. But um, even if the evidence is terrible, he might still get convicted because of exactly that. You don't join the lynch mob. You don't pervert justice. The Bible is very clear about this. Christians need to keep a cool head. That doesn't mean you're emotionless. If you want to cry tears for George Floyd, feel free to cry tears. There's nothing wrong with crying, nothing wrong with showing emotion. But what you cannot do is pervert justice and declare someone guilty before they've had a trial. You right. can't do that because it's very difficult for that person to actually get a consistent, fair kind of a trial. And we had legions and legions and legions of people. That picture that you showed of, of Russell Moore, I'm so glad you showed it first, because that's the image of what Christians were doing with Floyd verbally. Yes, I condemn exactly right. murder. I condemn murder. As, as if nobody knew you condemned murder before you said it, <laughs> that this guy murdered 
someone that you have no you have no clue because you've actually never seen what actually happened. Right. Um, and so it's just very frustrating because it's perverse. It's the opposite of what a Christian ought to do in these cases. I'm not saying you have to be emotionless. Um, if 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 because not everyone's wired like me. I see this stuff and I don't weep. And that's because I'm very disconnected from the situation. I'm, I see it on TV, but and it's it's it makes me feel uncomfortable. But I just don't weep. Um, but lots of people do feel like they need to weep. That's okay. If you want to weep over someone that you don't know because they died, I, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that's right. wrong. But your weeping cannot pervert justice. You know what I mean? That's right. the point. You cannot yeah. pervert justice with your weeping. Yeah, absolutely right. You need to be in control and you got to take every thought captive. And when I think Amen. about that verse, I, you know, your thinking and in my mind is connected with your emotions. You need to be able to control yourself and how you think about these things and you can't let it rule over you. Um, yeah. And then Betty says the standard is beyond a shadow of doubt. Yeah. I just don't see it happening. Um, but, and, you know, going back to this whole justice thing, I think it's really important to recognize that even with like, not to make this about politics or whatever, but it kind of is with, they were willing to impeach Trump the second time, the day after the January 6th, um, whatever you want to call it, March riots, I, what I forgot the word they used for it, insurrection, that's what they used for it. And they had all these cases that people died, people were murdered, it was an armed insurrection, and they impeached him a trial that was so atrocious that even John Roberts wouldn't even oversee it and sit in like he should have in the Senate for the trial. And it turned out that none of that was true, that even the police officer that died didn't get hit by a fire extinguisher like the narrative was. Even this story about him being sprayed by pepper spray and having an adverse reaction to it, and that's how he died, that didn't happen. And my point is, is if this could happen, leader of the free world, and we can have these show trials, these unjust uh, reactionary trials, I don't think that we should expect any more for us. Like if we're seeing that happen on the world stage, not in hiding, bragged yeah. about, boasted sure. about to the supposed to be the most powerful person in the world, sure. then yeah, I don't have a lot of confidence if I am um, Chauvin, no. And thinking that I'm going to get a fair trial. If Trump didn't, why wouldn't I? And like that's the importance of always like yes. taking these fights and not just conceding ground. Because when you see that happen, then jurors and judges down the line are going to be emboldened to be wicked and unjust as well. Yeah, smart, smart, smart people see this coming a mile away. Today, it's the person you don't like. Tomorrow, it's someone you do like. Tomorrow, mm -hmm. it could be you. Like, 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 there are actually some smart progressive liberals, and they see that. They see that this is insane. Why would we do this? Because, you know, again, you, you give the government some power to wield over your enemies. Who's to say who the next enemy is? It's very likely, right. by the way, to turn around. You know what I mean? So it, yeah. it's like it, it, we just have so much history that shows that this happens. It turns around and it, it gets, you know, done on you. The French Revolution so, is a perfect example of that. Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. So, so it's... You know, all these all these woke people that are like so pumped that, you know, you know, how they treated Trump and how they're treating these uh, these these white supremacists, uh, sem anti-Semites on Twitter. They're they're so dumb that they're, they're dumber than my children because my children can think ahead at least a little bit. You right. know what I mean? So like it's 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 borderline, you know, mental handicap to not be able to think even two steps ahead. Um, yeah, I, I agree with you, Matt. The, supposedly the most powerful man in the world got uh, treated completely shamefully. There's no, Unjustly, we have, yeah. none of us have any guarantee that we'd be treated fairly. You know, none. Right. Nope, not at all. And, yeah, it's sad. And it, how the people in the comments bring up a good point. It's like the jurors, like just imagine, the New York Times actually threatened them. They came out with, well, indirectly threatening them, I should say. Uh, they came out with an uh, article, they admitted they have all their pictures and information and they're not going to show them. It's like, why would you say that? Why would you put out an article saying that? It's you're indirectly threatening them that they're going to get doxxed if they come up with the wrong decision. Of course. Of course yeah. that's what it is. And and, it, and it's it's so perverse. And the thing is, like, like again, Christians ought to be showing the way here. Um, but they're not. So many of them have joined the lynch mob. 
so many of that, and I'm not I'm not putting that at the feet of the church because I, I feel like most of the people that have joined the lynch mob have walked away from the church. They might still be physically present, but they've walked away. They've they've already decided that they're they're casting their lot in with the likes of CNN and, and MSNBC. That's the lot mm-hmm. that they've casted. So they you know they've got no king but uh, Joe Scarborough. You know what I mean? So like. Yeah. That's that's the situation, you know. Russell Moore will do whatever Joe does. That's 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 what that's his that's his uh, measuring stick. So, um, so this is not at the feet of the church. The, the true church is pointing this stuff out. Um, but there are many Christians that have just decided they're going with the lynch mob, mm-hmm. and they, I, I don't know if they are are doing it like strategically to like maybe they'll get some mercy from them, you know, when the time comes or not. But it's a stupid idea. It's a very terrible idea. <laughs> Right. Absolutely. So I think I might have just uh, got us kicked off Twitter. I mean, off of YouTube. <laughs> Everyone that's watching YouTube just said it crashed and uh, we're not crashed at all. So yeah, we're, think, we're chatting. We're talking. Yeah, we're chatting. We're talking. So uh, well, goodbye, YouTube. Goodbye. Oh, I hope well. Gap comes out with a streaming key soon. <laughs> I'm not really going to miss you. So uh, there you go. I know. Seriously. <laughs> Gosh, talk about another platform I don't miss at all. Oh, wow. Um, I had someone ask me today, dude, I used to listen to all of your uh, YouTube channel. What are your videos on YouTube? What happened? I'm like, they started taking them down. So why would I keep putting them up? Yeah, right. What, it's just like, you'd be like a waste <laughs> yeah. of time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. No, thank you whatsoever. But you know, like the, you guys bring up a good point too with the, the jurors is we're really at a point and maybe have been for some time where it's going to cost blood to stand up to this and pay for the sins of our culture, the sins of our government. And really, that's how it's always been, right? Someone has to die for the sins, either it's a lamb representatively in the Old Testament or Jesus as the fulfillment of all of that. Um, and even in our lives, spiritually, like when we want reconciliation, we have to die to ourselves, take up our cross. And in a lot of times, in the context specifically in the government sphere, oftentimes it requires physical death, at least suffering and persecution. And yeah, these jurors are going to get doxxed. They are going to get harassed. They're probably, no some of them are going to get fired, right? Yeah. But it's not going to stop until brave men and women do it. Because that's the only way. There's no other way to stop this until we stand up and start laying down our lives and repenting and reversing this. Like I, To me, this is a form of repentance is when the jurors will stand for justice. I mean, if he's guilty, he's guilty, then great. Um, regardless if the mob wants you to or not, you should do the yep. just thing if he's guilty. But if he's not guilty and you're scared of the mob... That's where you lay down your life for not only your loved ones, but for the country. And you stand up for justice and you stand up for righteousness. And that's why it's so important to have Christianity in the fabric of our culture, because we've seceded from the culture for so long. We've listened to the government and the culture indoctrinate us and disciple us to say that we have no role there, that the religion and Christ and the Bible cannot have a say in our culture, cannot have a say in our courtrooms, cannot have a say in our government that we've gone so far that we have just given up and we in the order to get back into that we need to have christians who have those values and have that boldness from the holy spirit to lay down our lives as christ did it's the only way for us to repent as a nation i think yeah you got that right you got that right and um it can like you said it can come in many forms but it just has to happen and and you know, I know some people will say, "Oh, you're just you just want your freedom. You're just trying to be selfish." And it's like, no. See, when we when we're going for like what God says, it actually is for everybody. It's mm-hmm. for me, yes, but it's also for everybody. It's better for everyone. It would be better for George Floyd's family. It would be better for you know liberals, progressives. If you follow God's uh, plan, it'll be better for everybody. Now, you, if you're in rebellion against God, might not feel like it's better for you. Like, right. I'm pretty sure Lil Nas X would feel like he's being persecuted. But the thing is, he doesn't get to decide what persecution is. You know what I mean? That's one of those right. things that doesn't belong to Caesar. It doesn't belong to little Nas X either. God gets to decide what persecution is. And so um, we, 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 we have to do this because otherwise you're going to end up like Russell Moore where you just pick a t- You might not pick quite as gay a team as he's picked, but like <laughs> you will end up picking a team that... You know, it's going to be a mixture of good and bad. You know, it's going to have 
stuff maybe that you really agree with, like nationalism and stuff like that, but then it's going to be a mixture of some ungodly stuff. Like we don't want to just pick our team and then virtue signal to that team. Instead, mm-hmm. what we want to do is pick God's way uh, as best as we can understand it, as close to the, the original uh, text as we possibly can get it. Um, and that's th- then you're safe. If you're picking God's way, you're safe. You're not just picking a team or a political party. I'm pretty mm-hmm. confident that people in this audience are not going to be tempted by the Russell Moore's team. But <laughs> there are some teams on our side that could tempt people that aren't necessarily you one you want to align totally with. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's why it's important to not even align with a team or individuals like Trump for instance, sure. even though even though the second time I voted for him and I was totally all in on the election fraud, but it wasn't because of Trump. It was because I wanted justice. It's because of the values that he represented in his first term. Um, so when like if Trump turned out to be something he wasn't, if he was part of the state plan, like some people say, or um, anything like that, or he just failed and he had another divorce or whatever, it's like my hope isn't shaken because I was never picking his team. I was on Christ's team all along, just trying to sure. apply the values and making the best um, application of those values call, as yeah, possible. Yeah. Um, I think that's a good segue into this Matt Gates story, because to me, it's a, it's a mixture of these two things we were just talking about, actually, is putting our stock on one person's team that maybe we shouldn't have, and then also the injustice that's happened, because the New York Times broke this story without having any verifiable facts. It was all allegations that were from one person, one source, of him having um, uh, some inappropriate relationship where he was with a minor and paying for their plane tickets in a hotel room across states, which makes it a federal crime. And uh, it was just, it's a, it's a crazy story. And Matt Gates went on Tucker Carlson. I don't know if you saw any of this AD. I don't even know who Matt Matt Gates is. Okay. So let me start. (laughs) Okay. Let me start. Let me back up then for people who don't know. (laughs) Matt Gates is a representative from Florida, a house representative. So he's in the Senate. Um, I'm sorry. He's in Congress as a house representative and he basically is was or is still unless this breaks him and he's guilty of it he was the up and coming like populist guy probably 30 years younger than trump or 40 years or however long it is like he was the up and coming guy is he your age he's 38 years old so this guy's this guy's this guy's a mover this guy's a, a mover and shaker kind of thing yeah he comes from a billionaire family wow um but like not not anyone that I've ever heard of before, like none of not any of the like the people that we always have negative connotations sure. about. Yep. Yeah. So uh, but up and come well spoken, very smart guy. Like I liked him, charismatic. He's the one who went to Wyoming and called out Liz Cheney. Um, where Liz Cheney wouldn't even go to Wyoming and then she got censored and they're going to kick her out or whatever. But everyone was rallying behind him as like one of the new leaders of the populist movement, especially after Trump went down to Florida and kind of was off the scene. Um, And then so the story broke and was alleging that he's having sex with a minor and all of these different things without any verification whatsoever. And that's where the unjust part is happening, where our media is totally complicit in this of like as a reporter back in the day there were some standards of before you release something that could ruin someone's life like this like you're having sure. sex with a minor sure. um you would back it up with a several sources have some evidence none of that and then the next so the next day he goes on matt gates goes on tucker carlson and comes out with the story about how his dad was working for the FBI wearing a wire to uncover a bribery scheme of somebody threatening and bribing um, or extorting, I, I don't know what the correct term is, but asking for $25 million from his dad to protect Matt Gates from this story. And so the FBI was involved and there's this whole bunch of stuff that's happening. And I still don't know one way or the other, is it true, is it not, whatever. Sure. But my whole point and why I wanted to bring this up really is if Matt Gates would just do what God has called him to do and be married at his age, like he's a single guy, he's Mm -hmm. having sex with people, traveling around by his own admission, flying them on plane rides, traveling with them, paying for their hotels and living the bachelor life that the world Mm -hmm. loves to preach, right? If he just would have 
instead of done that, submitted himself to Christ and sure. done what God has called him to do instead. And if not married, then live in purity. But I have a feeling that no, he hasn't doesn't have that gift. Sure, uh, sure. But sure. if he would have just got married, these things would have never happened. And mm. I just think it's a really good reminder for us, not just from what we're talking about of not putting our hope in a person or a team. Sure. But also, there's a lot of security and shelter and doing what God has called us to do. Well, right. I mean, you know, and, and the thing is, like, obviously, you could obviously still cheat on your wife. We understand that. That's not yes, what he's saying. Yes, of course. What he's saying is, though, that the Bible explicitly says that if, if, you, um, if you don't have the gift of being chaste, get married. That's, it, right. that's the biblical prescription. So... We understand that you could still technically cheat on your wife, but we believe the Bible when it says that if you're following Christ, this is what you do if you're going to burn with passion, mm -hmm. right? You get yes, married. absolutely. And so, so yeah, listen, listen. <laughs> it's, you can just believe what the Bible says and carry it out. That is an option. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. and, and Believe it or not. I'm smiling and smirking because it sounds so simple. And I understand that, you know, none of us can do it perfectly, but it's a lot simpler than we make it. Right. We try to like get it all, we try to get it all twisted up. We try to give all too much nuance. We try to, we try to like make it more, seem more complicated than it is. But again, if we're going to believe the Bible, Christ says his burden is easy. His, his, his yoke is light. It's much Amen. simpler than we make it to just obey Christ. And that's preaching to myself because I make, I overcomplicate it. Yeah, you know what I mean? to that. Mm -hmm. For sure. And so it's just one of those things that like in every area of your life, and this is what, I'm glad we started with the public theology thing because <laughs> we do need to, the church in America and myself included, we actually do need to go back to the milk here. Like we, we just weren't brought up in this way. We weren't taught in these, in these ways. And so some of us are need, we need more beginner kind of basic sort of foundational training um mm -hmm. there's no shame in not knowing but there is shame in not finding out if you don't know how to live in every area of your life as a christian you got to figure that out exactly exactly right <clears throat> um and also like where are the christian men in his life like, that's the other yeah, thing too is it's like a whole Absolutely package true. it's not just get married it's you need to be in fellowship with christians that's right you need to have faithful men encouraging you along keeping you um pursuing christ and continually striving for uh, reformation, sanctification, and all those things in yourself. And when you don't have those things, you just are so exposed. And it's something as we go into a battle, and I think we are on our way into battle and into a war, uh, and spiritually, specifically because of just the judgment that it seems that God has put our country in, and it doesn't seem like it's letting up anytime soon. Yeah. Um, that it's more important than ever to constantly pursuing Christ in every area because it's not just about keeping you from sin per se, although it is that, but it's also helping you put on the full armor of God right. to be able to fight effectively. And if you're not doing that, these are the kinds of things that are going to give the enemy a foothold, as uh, the Bible says. Yeah, that's right. Because, and I think what your point is, and correct me if I'm wrong, but he would have been in, a, let, let's just say he didn't do it. He would have been in a much uh, more protected position if he wasn't gallivanting around town with tons of ladies. He yep. would have been in a much less vulnerable situation if he wasn't doing those things. Mm -hmm. And um, that's just a fact. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like, it's a lot harder to, like, assuming, again, that this is what's happening, it's a lot harder to get uh, uh, attempted extortion if you're just at home with your wife every night. Right. And she travels with you. And when you go to an event or a speaking thing, she comes with you too because she's your wife. Like it's way harder to get mixed up in one of these situations. Yeah, exactly <laughs> but right. If you're but if you're 38 and single and, uh, you know, hanging out at strip clubs and stuff like that, it's a lot easier to imagine someone saying, oh, I've got an opportunity here to potentially extort this guy. Yeah, exactly right. And I think that's part of the reason why the Bible says don't even put on an appearance of evil. Mm. It's because if you don't have the brand and you don't have the story that fits with these allegations, then they can make them all day long and it's not going to make sense. Like the Ravi Zachariah thing, if you're traveling around with your masseuse and those allegations come out, I mean, it looks like he did it, but even if he didn't, 
I mean, those are going to be believed sure. a lot more as sure. than if you never traveled around with a masseuse on your private plane. Right, and like, like, so there's wisdom yeah, if, in if these you bring things. Your, if you bring your wife when you go to Southeast Asia for three months at a time, it's going to be a lot harder to pin something on you. you exactly I mean? right. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? Exactly right. Because you can be like, hey, yeah, look at the flight manifest. It's my wife and no one else. But when it's your masseuse, you say, hey, look, oh, no, don't look at that. Don't look at that. that just, yeah. yeah, right. How, how dare you criticize me? Touch not the Lord's anointed. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. Oh, man, that's so sad. Ridiculous. Oh, my gosh. So I uh, was listening to Glenn Beck uh, and a clip. I don't really listen to his show. Um, I haven't listened to it for the longest time. Um, but he has a theory of why corporations are siding with the left. And I thought it was really interesting. And I'm just at a high level of it, because I think this is going to be a good indicator for us. If we ever as Christians take back our culture, then we'll be doing this and businesses will be scared of us. But as of now, this is why Glenn Beck says, and it could be true, of why corporations are so left. And I, I shared on my show, like the bubbles of how many people donated to the left and the, and all that stuff by company. And compared to Donald Trump, there was like two, two red organizations, the Marines and the New York NYPD, everything else like Facebook, financial banks, and uh, all that stuff were all deep blue. But there's this thing called an environmental, social, and governance score, an ESG score. And investors use it to rate companies. And what it is, is it measures um, your economic score, which is production, reoccurring, the things you would think, ecology, your impact on the earth and things like that. And then there's a political score and a cultural score as well, which bake into the social score. And what happens is, is if these liberals that have lots of money, these billionaires, these hedge funds, um, see that you are not doing enough to impact your cultural and political score and not participating enough in the social, the social religion of paying the respects of Black Lives Matter, bowing down to the, uh, you know, during the national anthem and condemning George Floyd and sending out the letters about Asian hate then they're going to stop investing in your companies. And there's a real bottom line attack, he is saying. And I kind of buy that. The fact that this exists, I took this, I looked it up on Investopedia, which is a financial like help site of definitions. Um, so right now, there is a religion, the state, scoring businesses on how well they are living up to the values of their religion. And until this changes, where it's us as Christians influencing this, I think that we've lost the culture hmm. for sure. That's and I think this would be a good indicator for us to think through. Like when Christians start having the standards again, and maybe it's not exactly like this because this is pagan. Um, I'm not saying we sure. should have our own scores, but when sure. the companies start fearing us and that we are the ones with the wealth that aren't going to invest in your companies, if you are going to go against our religion, Christianity, that's when we know that we're winning the culture war, but it's the exact opposite right now, at least. So I've, I've seen this environmental, social and governance score thing before. Okay. And oh, I bet you it, have in your line of work. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and so, well, and also in some of the investments that I do, I've always been interested because the, the kind of companies that I invest in typically score very low because I like mining companies. I like like companies that actually like produce commodities and stuff. Yeah. Um, cause I'm a weirdo, you know, <laughs> you know? but anyway, but th my, the companies that I, I tend to, to look at in, in, because of that, they score very low or average <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> because a gold mining company doesn't tend to really care about George, you know, Floyd, Chauvin, whatever. They just don't, mm -hmm. they, it's not in their radar. They're, they're busy digging dirt. You know what I mean? Right, so like, yeah. so, so I've always wondered what that score was and the, this, and the social part I thought was interesting as well. So that, that strikes me as it potentially could be true, you know, cause I, you know, it, it's, it's like, it's like thinking about why does Amazon a company like Amazon, why do they support like, you know, living wages and stuff like that? And, mm -hmm. and on the one hand, they kind of get the, the, the kudos from their Democrat buddies, you know, that's good. But on the other hand, it directly benefits them because they can afford the living wage. 
but their competition sometimes can't afford it. So right. it'll actually end up cleaning out their competition for them if they support right. this stuff, and they get a good pat on the back as well. So exactly. they might make a little less money in the short term, but in the long term, it's a great play for them. Mm-hmm. So everything that they support in that regard, they think it's to their advantage. And so this is a very interesting, it kind of goes along with that. So when right. they put the, the like LinkedIn is one of the most toxic websites of all time. If you, if oh, you ever, if you ever spend any time on LinkedIn, I do a lot because, it, you know, just recruiting and stuff to, like yeah. that. Right. I have no choice, but there's so much virtue signaling. There's more virtue signaling on LinkedIn than maybe on any platform ever. And yeah. I just saw some people I used to work with and they're like, I stand against Asian hate. And I just, I thought to myself for a good <laughs> half hour, like what drives a mind to post something like that? Like, because like, I don't think that anyone in their life before they made that post was thinking, oh, that, 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 that Elizabeth, like she probably hates Asians. Like, like <laughs> right. then they saw the post and like, oh, she doesn't. Oh, great. Like, like, like right. so what drove them to do that? Right. What drove mm-hmm. them to do that? And yeah. It's got to be that it, it, they think it benefits them in some way, and I, I think either career-wise or financially, or probably both. And it's the same. It's, it, it sounds like the, the the argument here. It's the same thing with the company because it does directly b- benefit their bottom line, their their investment pool, their their stock price. They mm-hmm. think it's very connected to doing something stupid like making your your symbol a rainbow. You know what I mean? Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, yeah, they wouldn't do it. Right. And uh, so the context of this is where like Glenn Beck was talking about it was from the Delta Airlines um, move right. that they did today against voter ID, the voter ID law that passed from Georgia. Sure. Um, and what's what's so funny about it is someone pointed this out. It wasn't me, but it's like you're required to have voter. You're required to have an ID, a photo ID to fly on that. Delta airplanes. Right? right. But you're saying you're against it for voting. Like, right. It, it makes no actual sense. Right. Unless something like this is true and it actually directly affects their bottom line, or at least they think it does. Exactly right. But what I love about this story is that the Republican House in Georgia, this yesterday when they tweeted that, went to remove and voted to remove their subsidies they get for being hubbed in Atlanta so sure. that they don't get their fuel tax credits anymore. And so they're going to have to start paying for their fuel and not be subsidized by Georgia. Unfortunately, there is still some rhinos in the Senate that killed it, but they promised to bring it back in 2022. Yep. And I say that to say that if we ever want to get to a place where they start fearing Christians again and we start controlling culture, these are the practical steps that we need to start doing. We need to start fighting back at the pocketbook, at the bottom line for these companies. It's like, oh, you're going to start trashing a law that we pass in our state? Well, our state's no longer going to give you subsidies. And for sure. the longest time, and this is, I'll always be thankful for Donald Trump for this one thing alone, is that he's taught Republicans how to fight back and that they could. Yeah. Um, and we're starting to see that, which I'm kind of thankful for. Because until we start doing this more on a grand scale, they're always going to bow down to these scores. They're going to bow down to the left and whatever they want because it's their sure. bottom line. Yeah. It's so interesting. That that's a very interesting theory. I'm going to noodle with that one a little bit. Um, yeah, I you like should. It. I like it. Yeah, that would be really interesting for you being in the the world that you're in. Yeah, definitely. No, I I I've always wondered about that score. I, and when I'm looking at my uh, accounts, I, I always see that. You know, I'm just like, yeah. And I I kind of figured it had to do with like in maybe environmental protection. But then the social Partly. thing kind of made me feel weird. Like maybe is that like like child labor or something? That's what I used to think. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like are these are these minds like employing children? Is that what's going on? Here? <laughs> <laughs> but but, uh, <laughs> but um, anyway, but yeah, that's that. You know, that's interesting. I I never really thought of it that way, but it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it makes a lot of makes- sense. And Democrats, you know, they tend people that vote Democrat tend to be you know higher performers. They tend to be. Um, they have a lot of money, you know, stuff like that. Um, I know they've been very successful at saying that the Republican voter is typically the poor sat or the, typically the rich guy, but they're right. super rich. Democrats are super rich. Oh, for sure. So they've got tons of capital. They've got tons of influence and there's nothing wrong with that in it, in of itself. But the problem is that they use it to serve their pagan religion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, That's absolutely. And, and punish their enemies and the competitors in business. Sure. For sure. That's the biggest lie that Democrats have ever sold. There's a bigger one that the Republicans are the country club. 
yep. the big business party and the Democrats are the working man party. It has never been that way. It's preposterous. Yeah, it's, it's it, preposterous. but they've been very yep. successful selling that. Yeah, I think that's why I think it's the most big. It's the most believable lie that they've ever had. Um, well, I think we should go. We probably got kicked off of YouTube. We were, our chats <laughs> yeah. look like it got turned off. We haven't had I a chat I, since eight fifteen. We, yeah, we we stopped getting <laughs> chats, man. Normally we get a ton, and we stopped getting yeah. about fifteen minutes oh, ago, man. That's that, terrible. It kind of it kind of sucks, but at the same time, I'm not really gonna miss it. I do enjoy you know chatting with people, so hopefully we can yeah. figure something out there. But yeah. Crazy There's got to be another man. platform we can live stream on. I wonder if it, it was because I called Russell Moore's team gay. <laughs> that was right <laughs> around 8.15, I think. <laughs> oh, that's gay. It really is, though, so I don't regret uh-huh. it. It's really, uh, really oh, whoa, 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 we got a comment. 8.32. They were the party of slavery. Oh, there we go. We're going to get kicked off again. <laughs> Uh, they can't they can't let that cat out of the bag yeah no not oh this is good i'm gonna read the whole thing they were the party of slavery but not sure that qualifies them as the working man's party (laughs) Uh, you know i had a chance to speak with austin Austin. uh on the phone last friday for a little bit really Uh uh-huh yeah but we we didn't have enough time to talk and i owed him a call back and i just haven't done it because it's just been crazy but um Mm. he he was he's 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 a a funny guy man i put it that way he is really funny yeah he's he's on gab Mm-hmm. He, his comments here are always good, but he's he, even in person. Well, I guess it wasn't in person on the phone, but uh, <laughs> happy to be the reason yeah. you get kicked off. Yeah, I bet you are. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, Austin, I'll try to give you a call tomorrow uh, if you're available. There I you go. You it's recorded, so you can hold this against him if he doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, 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 he can hold a lot of stuff against me. I, I told him I'd call him back. Like, I think it was yesterday. <laughs> well, well, now you can take this episode, go to his elders, and tell him he's wronged you if he does not call you back tomorrow. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much. Um, please share the show. We really appreciate all the support. I mean, that's the best thing you can do for podcasters is share the content. Um, thank you for everyone who supports us financially on Patreon and do Super Chats. Uh, we'll talk to you next week, Thursday, 7.30 p.m. Eastern. God bless. Hey, that um, public wait, wait, wait. theology thing. I was waiting for you to say goodbye. Awesome. Hold on. Oh, goodbye. Uh-